So, do you like comic books? Because I certainly do. I've got an entire comic book sleeve. You know, a little bit of Green Lantern, a little bit of Flash, Batman, Iron Man, Wolverine, Hulk. You know, the essentials. Forget Superman. He's a bit of a dick. Let's all be honest. Have you seen Batman vs Superman? He's a bit of a dick. But want to know what's not dickish though? Ripped Apparel. They have the finest comic book style tees. What's not to like? You know, get them relatively cheap. Cheaper than most other sites. And shipping is only a few dollars. You know, what's not to argue on about that? But here's the best bit. If you use the code Glaswegian Geeks at checkout, you can save yourself a whole 10%. So if you like any geek apparel t-shirts, vests, if that's your thing, or, you know... A big jumper, big hoodie, you know, something something for all weather, you know. Then head over to Ripped Apparel and use the code Glaswegian Geeks to save 10%. Hello and welcome to Glaswegian Geeks. This is something out of our comfort zone. We're not very comfortable. This is a little news story. Uh, a little news pos- podcast. Yeah, news of the last week's been very, very interesting. Some have been great. Some have been rather underwhelming and some have been just a bit piss but something that was quite good which did take me off guard at first was the announcement of the first ever female time lord yeah stepping in to the tardis and i say first female time lord i mean the proper, first ever first proper. doctor the doctor is now a woman played by jodie whittaker yes from Broadchurch fame and other such things. And she's a fantastic actress. Yep, I I've wouldn't fault her. I think she'll be really good at it. It did take me off guard at first. I mean, I uh, well off guard. You were... Uh, we all posted gifts in the chat of like a crying child in a corner. I wasn't that's that's that what we imagined. Bad. I was just shocked. I'm just you were essentially Stewie Griffin, let's be honest, after what I was face. bitter the because... I, weird I, way. I, look, I'll level with you. I'm bitter because I don't want Capaldi to go. I think Capaldi's just been unjustly treated on that show. I think he deserves far better. So, of course, when I knew he was leaving, I was just kind of hoping that that was just a wee lie so we could see him for one this season. But apparently not. So nope. now we've got Jodie Whittaker. Yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's something that fans have been wanting for a while. Uh, something that you were, at the, at the time, a little bit upset about because fans were basically saying that they were going to stop watching Yeah. because I mean, if, if it didn't happen, which I, I kind of feel... Does maybe need to happen a little bit more. If fans, if they don't like something, voice their concerns. You know, maybe stop watching full stop. That, like, most shows will worry about their ratings and stuff. So if people are saying that they're going to stop watching, if something doesn't change, then right enough. But also, it could throw a massive spanner into the works that any show has got planned. So it's it's a bit of a good and bad thing. Ma- majorly good because change is always good. Well, change is a big, big thing about what Doctor Who is all about. And the fact of the matter is, is it's just like, yeah, it's it's new. And yet at the time it did take me off guard. I mean, I knew it was coming, but I didn't think they'd actually go and do it. Now, like, I, I'm actually quite sold on the idea. I like it. I think it's going to be good. She can bring a lot to the table. And that's something that really does fascinate me and things need to change things do need to change with doctor who it's been the same kind of thing for years now like the last 10 12 years since it returned so and even before that you know yeah. it's been going on for 50 years it's time for something different so yeah i, d- I totally think jodie whitaker, whitaker will do a really good job with it and she's got chris chibnall and she's worked with him before and she's done a really good job so we can only hope that she's really going to deliver solidly and yeah i mean yeah, I think something good things are coming. Something that we discussed, uh, which we'd never really thought of when it happened. When this doctor regenerates, will it be another woman? Or will it be another man? Because this is something that might actually cause a whole lot of concern if they go from a female doctor to a male doctor that they're... I think it, it, it uh, could be a, a present woman, which is... A major thing, even in this day and age, it's. It, I, I I will never understand how it still happens, but well, it, it's something to look into that might actually cause maybe more uh, hassle. But I don't mean hassle as such. I mean. No, I get what you're uh, saying. You, you, like, you, you know where I'm saying. going. I mean, level with me, right? When Matt Smith was announced after David Tennant, no one was happy. When Peter Capaldi was announced after Matt Smith, no one was happy. There's there's a bit of hit and miss. 
fans never really want the current doctor to change because they start by disliking them and then slowly start liking them. I don't. I th- it's been more heavily influenced now because it's the first woman, and yeah, I don't put my sort of bitterness because of the fact that she's a woman, I put it in the bitterness because I really like Peter Capaldi and I don't want Peter Capaldi to leave. You know, very much like people were with Tennant. You know, that's kind of like how that is. She will bring a lot of good, but if they're ever going to change it back to a man, is this going to be a woman for the next 12 cycles? Is it going to be mixed? We don't know. The only thing we do know is that whenever this Doctor changes and whoever she changes into, people are going to be unhappy about it. That's just a general theme with Doctor Who, in my opinion. So, it's risky. It's a risky. Well, I'm not not saying it's a risky move turning like a, like a woman. What I'm saying is a risky move that from here on out. Yeah, because if they want to change him back to Aye. a man, people might be like, "Well, why are you not sticking?" Make him a him? dog. I'd watch that. Make him an alien. He's an alien. Aye. Like make him another alien. I mean, the reason why he changes into humans is because there is this connection that he has with humans. So he'll always be a human, in my opinion. Um, does this mean the companions, the companion stories are going to change? Are we going to have male companions, etc.? That kind of thing. Mm, there might be. How well, how, how, how many companions have been through with Chris Eccleston, uh, Ten, and uh, everyone else? How many? How many uh, different? There has companions? been a couple of male companions, like quite a few male companions, but they're primarily women, purely because they like to play this little love story, and it just doesn't really always work out, in my opinion. I think. I mean, Chris Marshall apparently has been said in a, an article that he was actually the favourite to play the Doctor, and when it came out that it was Jodie Whittaker, apparently he's now been looked at as the companion. So there's something about Chris Marshall, which I think will be quite interesting regardless. I think as long as they just stick to what the concept of the show is. I mean, Doctor Who's always has always been about kindness. It's always been about doing the right thing. And I don't think they'll go away from that. So overall, it can only be a good thing. Stay in the right direction. Yeah, hopefully. Well, I mean, Second on our lovely list is the announcement, the glorious announcement from 20th Century Fox, who you may know from Fantastic Four flop fame, uh, as the new Doctor Doom movie. Yes, there is a Doom movie in production, well, going to start production, which... That just came out of nowhere. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I don't know where they can really go with the character. Still not seen the new Fantastic Four, but I'm totally game for a Doom movie, if they do it right. But they can't. But you guys seem to be on the wrong end of this. Get a chance. I know it's Fox, and it's probably not going to be brilliant, but it might, you know, you never know. <laughs> but what, like, like I say, I mean, it was the same with Deadpool. I used to always say, what is the Deadpool film going to be like? And they, they did surprise They me. actually came out on top of that. Of course, Deadpool was not without its problems. Mm. Minor ones, yeah. Well, no. We won't get into it, but like I say, there's that no film is really without its problems. And I just don't see where a Doom film would fit. It's like the Gambit film. You know, I don't see why that's happening. Maybe just branching out, f- like, l- loved characters, you know. Like, that the, the worked really successful with Wolverine, Deadpool, as you know. Uh... They're, they're, they're wanting to branch out and have some solo movies, you know? Yeah. Because, like, obviously they're doing the new, the new movies as well, aren't they now? Like, they're so doing the gifted, but they can't, like, like loads of TV Because if you think about it, like, they do, like, the new mutants does, like, it looks a bit more promising than what the X-Men originally looked like. I'm not going to say it's going to be better than X-Men, because X-Men's, you know, it's, it's still pretty good for what it is. Um, but at the same time, I wouldn't see Channing Tatum crossing over with, like, the tiny X-Men. Well, see, here's the thing. He, he would look like the bloody juggernaut next to them. There was another announcement <laughs> previously that the next Fantastic Four reboot was going to be more aimed at kids. Yeah. And now they want to do a Doctor Doom movie. I, I don't... That's the thing. Is They're it going to be, be on Doom's life? Is it going to be Which two separate entities? Is it going to be what? Like, this is the thing. Like They've got the rights to Doom, who we've elaborated many times before as one of the greatest villains to ever exist. Yeah. And so I, I have a feeling these two films are going to be separate, but I just feel, I, j- I just don't see where Doom is only as good as the people he's fighting. You know what I mean? Is, like, is there any word on if it's going to be the one from the new remake or if it's just going to be a standalone, like some brand new, like a third Well, this is Doctor the thing, Doom they've only now. announced it. They've only said I know, I know. it's in uh, the works, but I don't even think they know what they're doing plot-wise with it. Because I, I didn't see the new, the 
the, the newest one because of all the bad reviews for it. I wouldn't even pay. I've, I've seen it in the discount shops and all that, and I even I wouldn't pay the money for it by the looks of it. But at the same time, I, I'm, I'm a big Doctor Doom fan, and I, f- I kind of want it to be not bad. I mean, me and Mario did say that. The yeah, way we watched it, and yeah. uh, the best parts were the Doom when parts. Doom just looks at somebody and their heads explode. That's Spoilers. the spoilers. That's the power of Doom. You know, like <laughs> power that's the power of love. <laughs> that's that's what that's what Doom would do. I think you know. I just I I don't know. I think it's just another kind of wee cash grab that's going to backfire on them. I mean, they could surprise me. Unless it's going to end up like the the whole Black Adam thing that was going on with Shazam, where they announced Black Adam before they announced who Shazam, and then now and now the and, and, and now they've, and now they've pulled him right out of it. Like unless this is just to get people interested in it or something. You never know. It's Fox. Is this maybe to counter what uh, Sony have been trying to plan for ages with a Sinister Six movie and a Venom movie, having a major villain take the lead instead of the heroes, which is maybe a fresh take, it's maybe a nice way to introduce characters and stuff, have it from the villain side and have the hero as an antagonist from the villain's point of view? Yeah, probably, yeah, that that probably works. But I don't know, I I just think that Fan stick didn't work. Let's level with it, you know. So wherever it goes from here is just going to be what it is. So I don't know. I'm not convinced about a Doctor Doom film. There's been no real basis on who he is, to be quite honest. But moving on from that, we have the, let's call them it, the Black Order. Mario's boys. Yes, 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 yes. We were greeted with some statues next to Thanos at D23 last week, which... They they look absolutely beautiful, uh, and the Black Order they they've been christened the children of Thanos in this, which you know th- I'm all for because it's a they are fairly new characters and it also introduces them to new fans. And instead of going, oh, this is his generals that he's uh, gathered from around the universe, uh, killers and stuff, you know, tying it into children of Thanos is a nice, simple, easy way for non-comic book fans to understand what's happening. So, yeah, all for it. Uh, there is one of them missing, uh, I believe, Super Giant, but we've uh, got Eb- the Ebony Maw, Corvus Glaive, Proxima Midnight, and Black Dwarf. Now, if you're not familiar with these characters, they're in Infinity... I believe the ty- the story arc Infinity, yeah, and the Avengers and New Avengers comic running up into that major arc. Yeah, they're killers. They're they're they are basically Thanos's lieutenants, and I'm all for this because realistically, the Avengers w- basically handed the Chitari their asses on in Avengers one, so. We 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 need a major threat in the, against the Avengers and Thanos. We we all know that Thanos is just basically going to destroy the living hell out of them. He's going to annihilate them. He's going to kill easily two, three of the characters. I would say like you you need a lot of cannon fodder against on both sides. The only one that's got any chance is the Hulk, and that even that's not much of a chance. Yeah, even then, like he's 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 going to be in trouble. So from here, yeah, I w- I w- I'm happy with that because it means that we're going to be granted a lot more action scenes. It's not just going to be the Avengers against Thanos, one big bad. You know, maybe he will still have Shatari, maybe he will have something else to help him. But this is a major, major good thing happening right now for Marvel. You're the, you're the Thanos lover, Mario, so I wanted yeah, to Yeah, big tease, my thing. So I wanted to ask you... Do you think we might see Thane? Mm, it would be a good way. Thane was introduced in Infinity, Infinity Story. Basically, Thanos is travelling all over the universe and he is annihilating and killing every one of his children. Basically because, well, he's 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 basically a god almost, power-like. So maybe the only thing that can properly kill him is his own blood. So... And Thane is introduced as a crossed, and he, Thanos slept with an inhuman however many years before, and this is his bloodline and stuff. So it could 
uh, in the Avengers uh, movie for Infinity War introduced Thane to save the day. Possibly. Could well, they tie yeah, it in I mean, another way? It could be anything. I mean, they can go full on comic book and have Nebula take the Infinity Gauntlet from Thanos and yeah. lay into him with it. You know, I mean, that's another thing. And are the children of Thanos going to be the main antagonists of Infinity War and Thanos is going to be the main antagonist of the second part? Or, I, you know. I, 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 I would like to think that, in, that Infinity War is going to have Thanos bang center, but to get him, he's got the Black Order there. There, there is like last line of defense almost. So it's it's something to take a look into. Uh, if if you're not familiar with the comics, I would definitely say to read up on this because they are, they are fairly fresh characters, or maybe like three four years old. So to be pushed that far and that prominent into such a major movie, it's a hell of a step to take. But hell. We've said it before, changes are good things. Right, so following on, next up we have an announcement that there's going to be a, what sounds like a standalone Harley Quinn versus Joker movie. <sighs> so some major shade getting thrown at that right now. Uh, what's your guys' thoughts? Uh, what can I say? There's, there's, this, th- this movie is going to be happening after the Gotham City Sirens film. Which will f- continue the Harley Quinn storyline, and I, th- I, th- I feel it's maybe too soon for a, a Harley and Joker standalone. I d- I don't know. I think like it would seem like the only logical preview into the Gotham City Sirens, like the prelude to it, why Harley leaves the Joker. It seems weird. I mean, the whole way Suicide Squad pegs them is that they are madly in love with each other. So what's happened all of a sudden to make them fucking hate each other? I mean, we all have this well-known assumption that the Joker fucking really doesn't like Harley at all. He just keeps her because he can. You know, so it would seem like the logical prelude to the Gotham City Sirens film. Again, Margot Robbie would be up for it. I can't see Jared Leto being up for that. I Mm. can't. I know he got a little... I don't know, like, I'm not saying he would be up for it, but I, like, kind of want to see Margot Robbie beat the crap out of fucking Jared Little, you know? Yeah, well, <laughs> this is the thing. In That's the, the only comics. part of that movie I'd watch was just that. In the comics, we've always had this, even in the Batman animated series, Harley Quinn getting beat up by the Joker and, and still like, running back to him. And yeah. And it's, 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 a, it's a common thing in real life, so. And, like and we never saw that at all, apart from. Uh, Joker pushing her into the vat of chemicals. We never really saw anything abusive towards Harley, which I know pissed off a lot of people, including myself, because they're trying to portray it as a... I think you said it as a new American love story, James. Yeah, that's that's what I was kind of getting from it. It's, it's weird. It's like... It's genuinely loving something you shouldn't love. You know what I mean? Like we all, we all just know from reflex by this point that the Joker's a bit of a dick. Yes. And we we like him because he's a he is a true villain. But it's this kind of concept of where does this go? How? When? Where does it stop? Why does Harley Quinn all of a sudden? Because in Suicide Squad, you know, there were scenes where it was made out that you know the way David Ayer wanted to portray it was Joker was abusive, and the studio took it and made it more of a a love story. A very twisted love story. So to me, I just can't see where they would fit that story in. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I think, again, like the Doom movie, it just seems a bit pointless. And I could only see it acting as maybe like a 20-minute mi- a twenty minute preview into the start of Gotham City Sirens. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, uh, that could work. That would, that would maybe suit it better. But here's the thing. Can the Joker and Harley Quinn hold their own movie together? I know Gotham City Sirens. You've got Poison Ivy, Catwoman, and Harley Quinn. And obviously, you have Gotham in the name. Will Batman make an appearance? Possibly. It's very likely. But who else are you going to introduce to bring that audience in? But then, but then that could introduce you know, Catwoman and Poison Ivy, they could be, like, the underlying character. But again, two huge characters that I don't think you can just throw into the mix willy-nilly. It just, it just, it seems like there's this big increase in villain movies with no real substance under it. I mean, Harley Quinn's been seen as a hero 
yeah. in the films. Like that's how she's being portrayed. She's the tragic hero, but it's it, it's if that's going to work in its own full film because we all know Harley Quinn will be the protagonist to of Joker's course. antagonist. Of course. So I can't I can't really say it. I, again as a as an intro sort of to. Gotham City Sirens? Yeah, I could understand that, but I couldn't understand it any other way. And that takes us to our next part, which is a two-part Death and Return of Superman animated feature. Now, I've... <laughs> I think I've mentioned it quite often enough. I don't know if I've done it on here. That I think Superman's a bit of a dick. Yes. And the only stories that I actually like of Superman... As long as he dies. Yes! You know me so well, Matthew. You're like an open book. Oh, <laughs> How do we feel? I'm I'm very pleased with this because I get to see Superman die again. So just I, that. I, 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 I'm, I don't get off to that, but I do like it. It's not just that. Like Animation is where DC is strongest, I'd say. Like, oh, well, I think they've been lacking recently. Aye, recently. I mean, with the but Judas contract and stuff like that, they've been lacking. I mean, all of a sudden, the death and return of Superman seems to come at the time just when Justice League's about to come out and they've not showed you any of Superman at all. So, is this one of those ones where it's like... I mean, it won't come out before Justice League, I don't think, but it'll come out kind of... run about that kind of time. Well, Justice League's, what, November, November this year? November. Is it is it scheduled for this year, do you know? Well, I mean, they've announced it, but they announced uh, Batman and Harley Quinn a couple of months before it came out. Yeah. So, will this come out at roughly about... Yeah, they yeah. only announced that maybe two or three months ago, so... Yeah, so when might it come out when Justice League comes out, just to kind of fill a gap for some reason, like just to say, oh yeah, Superman died, but he can definitely come back if the end of Dawn of Justice didn't give you that. Cause I know with like most of, like the most recent DC stuff, like when they're doing like the Batman and Robin stuff, it's run about March, April, like because it's usually around about my birthday, so I feel like DC know me. Um, but I like as I say, like I feel animation is where they are pretty strong animation and I don't want to say TV shows but I get the feeling I'm going to get shunned for that they're definitely better than Marvel for TV t- shows oh well, unless you're counting the Netflix stuff I don't know yo, yo I'm gonna it's go it depends what you like to be honest I personally aren't overly fond of the TV show the, the TV shows that DC put out but I do like things about them you know and DC have proven in the past many times that their animation's where it's at. So yeah, exactly. You know. Just look at uh, Justice League Dark. Like, yeah, that, that's that's brilliant. Uh, uh, go way back. The animated series of Batman. Oh yeah, of I mean, course. That's the very first really kind of mainstream thing. So you know, th- DC know their strengths and they're trying to like branch out, but it's are they branching out too much? It's like Marvel; they branch out far too much. I w- I, I would say that DC really excel at doing standalone animations where it's oh we'll just take this story arc and we'll turn it into an animation they're really good at it uh, the Tower of Babel which was Justice League Doom I believe it was called mm-hmm. that brilliant brilliant absolute near scene for scene uh, from page to animation of that I'm all for it uh, am I that excited about having to pay to for a Superman animation? No, I'm not excited about that, but I will pay for it because, hell, this is the stuff that we like. Even if I don't like Superman, hell, fuck it, I'll still watch it. Just give me, the, give me what I want. Give me the Crisis of Infinite Earths. I want sadness. I want a lot of action. Give us something big. And lastly, very weird sounding mm. news... Yeah, I, I don't know how to really talk about this because it's, it is really just uh, more rumour than anything and it's been speculated for a for a short while yeah. since, I would just say maybe a couple months. I'd say, like, I wouldn't, even, I wouldn't say it's much longer than a year. Anyway. Yeah. But, like, yeah, Ben Affleck is apparently meant to be leaving the role as, of Batman. Yeah. Which and DC are meant to be doing it subtly, like yeah. I how know. do you subtly remove Batman? I, I'm I'm not I'm not really happy with this. Like I feel uh, Ben Affleck has done a fantastic job. It, al- although it's only been one movie, it's been an absolute barn burner of a 
performance he'd done in Batman v Superman. And then soon after, or even just before, he was confirmed to star, direct, and write the script for it with Jeff Johns. Now, there's a new, he stepped away from directing, and it was under the impression he would still be acting and writing a script. Now, the new directors came in and basically said, no, nope, his script's getting pushed aside. So, now he's going to just be starring on it. And I think this is the whole speculation and rumour churning of, oh, he's going to be leaving. It's, it's the same with Jared Leto. Ben Affleck and Jared Leto have been the two most vocal about being fucked over by the studios that are making the DC films. They don't feel that they get to do what they want to do, and when they do do what they want to do, it gets cut or they get undermined in some way, and that's just... that That's a big problem for me, because Ben Affleck's performance in Batman vs Superman is the, the best Bruce Wayne performance I've ever seen. I think he plays it so well. And he's playing this aged angrier like Bruce Wayne who has lost you know and it manages that so well so losing him I think is just going to be a a huge problem also like I'll be the first to admit when I first heard that he was going to be Batman I was the one that jumped on the bandwagon and was like no I'm not game for this and then after a couple of weeks I kind of calmed down and waited I was like do you know I'll give him a chance I'll wait I'll wait and see his performance before I actually say anything properly about it and then after Batman vs Superman, I loved him. I thought he was one of the best Batman. I'm not gonna say he was the best, but he played a he played the sort of Batman aspects. you'd seen in sort of like the animated sort of Aye. Return of the Joker. Aye, the really angry sort of Batman. miserable guy who didn't really feel like he'd done much with his life. And I think again losing Ben Affleck is going to be a huge knock. And if Ben Affleck goes, I can totally see Jared Leto gone. They're gonna. Th- are they going to have to recast most of their main parts? Because that's a big problem. That doesn't go unnoticed. People notice. People that see that shit. Thing. Yeah, people see that shit. I mean, when you're talking about taking Batman out of a situation, subtly, <laughs> I mean, only Batman can take himself out of a situation, subtly. Do you know what I mean? Because he just fucks off. So if you ask me, I don't know. I think DC are kind of... The only way I could possibly see them doing it, and this, is, this doesn't even be saying subtly, is removing Bruce Wayne. From the yeah, if they, if they killed him off, Batman. If not even killing him off, like just saying, like I'm retiring. That's me done. Like, oh, for, forget even the retiring. If they're going to sign away uh, Ben Affleck, do it in the right way. Battle for the kill, final yes. crisis. Kill him off in a major way that is definitive. Okay, leave the door open like a final crisis story where, if they want down the line, they could bring Ben Affleck back. But as a more Batman Beyond Bruce Wayne, a mentor role. So, have it like that, and then maybe introduce... Well, I, this is a whole thing that came out during BVS. Oh, is one of the, uh, the graves at the site. Is that Dick Grayson? Did Dick Grayson die? Did did Jason Todd die? Is he dead? Is is he the Joker now? You know, that's, that's something that they can go from if... If those characters still live in this universe, have that storyline, and then how they're already uh, want to do a Nightwing story, so have uh, say at the end of that movie, Batman Bruce Wayne dies. It's not and just like like they're not just going to be plucking obviously characters out of nowhere because oh, of course obviously there's also the Teen Titans TV show that's going to be coming out so people will know who Nightwing is. It's not like they're just going to pluck Nightwing out of nowhere. Like not many, not hundreds of people know who Nightwing is. I've I've found as cosplaying as Robin apparently. Like, but everybody knows Dick Grayson apparently. My problem. Everyone is... Everyone does know Dick. Everyone knows a Dick. Um, no, like my problem with the DC at one. movie universe. <laughs> My problem with the DC Universe is it's constantly, this is what we want to do, this is what we want to do, this is what we're going to do, but there's no substance behind it, you know, it's like, we're going to make this big universe, right, okay, make it, you know, just show us it, don't tell us you're going to do it, because then you let people down, that's exactly what happened with Suicide Squad, they can't afford it, they've, they've kind of won it back a bit with Wonder Woman. They really have done something incredible with Wonder Woman, and I, but it doesn't I've, I've, yet, I've yet to see any proper dissing of the movie and anything that comes for that is probably just misogynists oh that bad word I just don't 
I just think if they, they they've won it back a bit with Wonder Woman, but it doesn't justify the two bad ish movies that came before. So they need to consistently be good. Justice League has to be good. If Justice League isn't good, they've only got one good film to their name, which isn't good. So losing your main cast, who were the better parts about it, that's a bad thing to me. So that's another wrap for today. I hope you liked our little news uh, info drop. You know, we're, we're always trying to think up a different podcast to so that we can meet up and chat because you know we're we're all good friends and we like to rip the piss out of each other whenever we see each other. James, I'm looking at you, fucker. And on that note, this is Matt signing off for the Glaswegian Geeks. Where you can, can you find? Where can you find? Oh, us? oh aye, we do oh, the things. Oh, 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 we gotta do the things. So, Matt, where can you find our stuff? In a box hidden underneath my bed? No, wait, um, no, that, no, no, that, oh, no, that that's, that's the kinky stuff, mate. Shit. Um, oh, I, I, on the, on, on the interwebs. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 uh, on, well, we're on SoundCloud. We're yes. On, we're on iTunes yet. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, want, want me to take the reins? Ah, you, you, okay, you do okay, it, you okay, do okay. it. Okay. So, you can find our work on SoundCloud at Glaswegian Geeks. We are on iTunes, Matt, at Glaswegian Geeks. And we also have a little YouTube channel with Matt uploading Doing stuff. some of his dirty, dirty deeds, creating cosplay. Damn dirty deeds. Which will be hitting there very, very shortly. And... Uh, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter at Glaswegian Geeks. Just have a look for us. You know, buy a t-shirt from Ripped as well. You'll find our links and our codes pinned at the top of both pages, which is what co- what is that code again, Matt? I, I, I can't seem to remember what it is. Glaswegian Geeks. Oh, do you know something then? And there's no space in between it. There is no space. It's no all caps. Letters either. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. So on that note, Matthew... This is James, Mario and Matt signing off for Glaswegian Geeks. Everybody, geek out.